this video, I am going to do a quick update on all my vendors. That would include how are the copper victims doing, the copper toxicity, are they growing roots? There are some things that have happened in the meantime. We're also going to have a look at my Vanda totem pole here in a little bit more detail. Speaking of the copper victims over there, that's where they are. That's Vanda Denisoniana and Vanda Leopard Yon. And we are going to go, woo, deep south. There's two more living down there that I would like to update you on because not all has been fabulous and smooth sailing since I've lost so many of the big vanders in 2021. If you're inclined to join me, I appreciate your company. Thank you very, very much. All right, huh, not quite reaching the top of Vanda Chow Pryor. She's doing really, really well. <laughs> Surprisingly well, especially that top crown. It's still growing out nicely. And I say surprisingly well because, yeah, you can see that I've got hob filter material around her at a certain point because this Vanda fell over in a storm twice and she actually cracked her main stem. So I was hoping to encourage possibly some roots in this area and I keep misting and spraying it. But since the time that she fell and cracked, the hob material is not helping at all to produce more roots. There is still nothing in there that would warrant me taking it off. And that is why I'm saying that she is growing surprisingly well. <laughs> that crack is pretty, pretty through and through down there. But obviously she is still getting some sustenance through the main stem. Now the hob material is not only in that area. Let me get you sorted out. There we go. It is also wrapped around on many roots, <laughs> which was supposed to be temporary. And I put them there for the summer of 2021, hoping to increase the humidity around the roots. And well, that has worked. I intended on taking them off for the winter, but as you can see, they're still on for no other reason except that, well, I just never took them off. And the roots are doing brilliantly. Even though the hob material looks nasty, it is doing its job. When I miss this orchid, it really saturates and drips all the way down a root and we will be able to see some branching shortly. What also helps with the location of this Vanda Chow Praia with the aerial roots in my very hot and dry, lacking humidity climate is the fact that my neighbor has to water her side of the fence and that increases the humidity in this little pocket here to such a degree that I actually do get some root growth out of the Chow Praia and the Papilio Nanthu, which you can see right here. <laughs> yes, I did a community poll for both of them. I was not expecting that I would have to ever take it off. And well, maybe in about three years, I will be trying to peel it off. Or maybe not. I don't know. For the time being, the Papilio Nanth and the Chow Praia are living in perfect harmony. What you see right here is the top of one of the side shoots that grew out right below the second break in the main stem. So I'm going to get you down and get you in a little bit closer because what's going on down there is remarkable. And I was trying to encourage that up here. Check this out. Here's the other one. Here's the break which back in the day I treated with dragon's blood and I stuffed cotton wool saturated with dragon's blood into the crack. And the crack goes from all the way up here down past that root right there. But look what happened. Yeah, they're doing very, very well. I'm really pleased that that actually happened because, well, if needs must, I can sever them from the main stem because their root system is also astounding. It's gorgeous. It goes all the way down and we're going to see some branching over here. This is all the root system of this piece right here. It's going to take a while before I pluck up the courage to actually sever them but I will do so one day if needs must. I'm also getting new roots right down here at the base, including branching. I love the fact that I have my Chow Praia still intact, even though I could literally hear when she fell over, not just the wrought iron little stand that this totem pole is hanging on. I couldn't just hear that clang, but I heard the first time she snapped, 
it was a loud crack and then of course I heard the same crack again the second time she snapped but I don't see any bloom spikes at all so this is probably going to be another year that we have to wait to see these gorgeous beautiful purple blooms of the Chao Praia. Now I'm going to scoot you around the other side and we can have a look at the Papilionanthe. Finally, the Papilionanthe is in her element. Both these orchids live outdoors all year round and you can imagine that five degrees Celsius during the winter at night is not to their liking at all. They have acclimated, they have to tolerate it, but now that the Papilionanthe is getting nice hot temperatures, she's spiking for me in two places and that's a first. Here's one spike and there's another spike coming down here. Plus the ants have found the spikes, which is again, a bit annoying, but you know, I'd rather have ants than no orchids. She's also growing two new roots. So I'll probably have one going straight into the hob material and she's growing another root right there. It's gonna be a root nub and you will see from the other side because we are going to turn around. I have to miss them now. I want to show you something first though, especially if I can make it happen with this root over here. It's fascinating. But let me take you down a little bit further and I'll show you something that's going on with another root, which is a shame, but fascinating. And it's happening to a root from the Chao Praia. Now I've taken some pictures because maybe it's not that obvious if you don't know what you're looking at, but we're looking at this root right here. This root had finished growing and then it started to extend. Had a beautiful root tip growing here. And then you can see that my hanger situation here has rusted a bit and the root was growing down and over the rusty part of that hanger there. And I was watching it very, very closely. I wasn't going to intervene. I usually put sellotape around these hanger things, but I wanted to see what was going to happen this time around. So the root then grew along. It continued with its root tip all the way around and it is now over here. And again, I'm putting pictures in so that you can see where I'm coming from. It did fine. I expected the root to die the moment it touches the rust, rust being super acidic, but it kept growing. And then what happened was that the acid of the rust ate into the velamen and exposed the inner spongy part of the root itself and capillary action took effect and the root started to blacken from the point of the wound here going up to where it was fresh and had started to extend. And I was watching this with a lot of interest. So if you think that this is all nonsense and you're still here, thank you very much. I thought it was super interesting to see how this one root was actually absorbing the acid and how the capillary action took it up and was burning the root from the inside. The velamen is still intact, but the root is burnt from the inside. Now, today I noticed the root is extending again because there was a point it had stopped growing. And this I picked up today and I thought, right, I'm gonna do an update on my Vandas in general, but I wanted to show you how the root is starting to extend again despite the intervention of rust up at the joint right here. I don't know if that's fascinating to anybody else, but when I'm around this totem pole, I observe roots on the daily several times a day because I have to mist so many times just to counteract the heat and the dry air. Now, I'm going to try and show you what I see happen to this, whoa, I'm sorry, happen to this root right here when I missed it. And I hope today the air is dry enough and I hope to be able to capture that on camera. If not, geek mode will ensue once again and I will talk you through what I'm seeing. Let's give this a go. It is super dry. I have 16% humidity today. This root was misted this morning and then not again. So it should respond with what I believe will happen or at least what I see happening on the daily. Can you see it move? Did you see the tip come up? If I have to, I'm going to replay it in slow motion. When the water hits that root at the end, it's like the whole root goes, oh, 
Yes, thank you. And it lifts itself up. I know, geek moment, I told you. I'm just fascinated by the roots that I get to see and how the velamen and the root itself reacts to water. And you can see how black the root is with the rust in it. Look at that. That's had a little bit of water and it's turned black. And still, that root tip is going to continue and extend. <laughs> I don't know, like I said, if this is of interest to anybody at all, but oh my goodness. Standing here misting my Vanda totem pole, it's just, oh, I love it. I love seeing how these things happen. And right at the bottom of this contraption, I have this pot, which was one day supposed to be for a Phragmopedium because of the long roots, Phragmopedium, semi-hydro, deep reservoir. But it turns out that the early days, the roots of this Chao Praia, they were extending downwards and I wanted to support them with some water. The reason it looks like this is because it's calcium, magnesium and seaweed. Now. I only change this water out maybe once, twice a year, so it is pretty disgusting when I do. And I did that recently because here we are, summer, calcium, magnesium, let's grow. I fertilize my totem pole on the daily anyway, so this is like a calcium, magnesium soak indefinitely, so to speak. And I'm gonna add some footage where you will see where I took the roots out and how algae covered they were. I cleaned them up and then put them into a clean pot with 100 parts per million of CalMag and 50 parts per million of seaweed. And bit by bit, they do extend a little and I find that pretty amazing. So full water culture for my Vanda Chao Praia. <laughs> but it's working. Yeah, me, I don't clean this pot out a lot. I let nature do its thing and let the algae do its thing. And sometimes King actually takes a swig out of that water, so <laughs> I don't know how it serves him, but hey. <laughs> Here are my beautiful Vandas that I still have left, the ones that are in basket. Classic setup style Vanda Denisoniana on the left and Vanda Leopard John on the right, which is not her real name, but I do believe that it can be a cross of Vanda Suavis with Vanda Cristata. Now these guys, they need a lot, a lot of water because they still haven't started on any new roots for me, neither have they started branching. I can hardly expect that, I suppose, because while they're in bloom, they're not also going to be growing roots at the same time. But I'm running out of time. We are already heading into the middle of the hottest months of the year, and I still have no new root action on these two. So my next hope would be that come the cooler months, heading into September, October, that I will get root action. Eventually, and at some point, I'm desperate to see a new green root tip on these orchids. The velamen is compromised, unfortunately, by my copper treatment. I hope this root is in focus because this is the root I mainly focus on when I water abundantly. It's the one that comes out the greenest while the others, of course, have the damaged black markings. This one has also last year been the most promising one, showing me some kind of root nubbins along the length of the root. And I really, really want these nubbins to progress. To this day, I have not achieved that. But this orchid and the other one, they get daily mistings, a lot, a lot of watering on the leaves, a lot of supplementation of calcium, magnesium. And then once a week, even though I'm not a fan of using a lot of seaweed, these guys do get seaweed just by itself, just to see if I can't encourage some new root growth to come from this, at least this one bit of velamen here that doesn't look so banged and bruised and old and dead. I know there's a shadow, but maybe you can see that no other velamen is responding the way this one right here is. The keiki is doing great. I'm also anticipating, hopefully, to get some new roots out of the keiki. That would be amazing. But yeah, both these orchids on a daily basis, especially the velamen that I can see that is a little bit more healthy looking, they get like three or four mists a day. Fingers crossed it's going to work. 
And here we have the last two candidates I want to update you on. And this is Van der Green Hopper. It's a made up name. This one right here, sorry. It's a made up name. I don't know what's in it, but it has, in my opinion, Rinko Stylus Gigantea in it simply because of how the roots are behaving or not behaving in my climate. And here is Rinko Stylus Gigantea crossed with Van der Cerula. I am so happy to say that. I have so many root tips on the go on the Rinko Stylus cross that is in here in a semi-hydro setup. It was the last ditch attempt to get this to respond and hold on to a root. So you can see how gnarled all the roots are because it's always start, stop, more stop than start. And I'm hoping that having her in this super high water retentive setup that the roots will hopefully respond and put some life and energy back into the orchid. She has not bloomed for me since she arrived, which is a huge shame because I absolutely adore the blooms. But you can see also I'm getting roots here is a new root tip. And on the other side, right there, is another root tip. And the ones inside, there is a root inside the container, well, more than one root, that is actually greening up. So not from algae, but the fact it is starting to grow and become a semi-hydro root. But wow, what a fight it is with this orchid. I also missed it every day when I go around, give my Vanda some respite just to keep the leaves not just cool, but hydrated. And the velamen of the roots are greening up. So yeah, active growth, everything is going and kicking off here. But this one has been challenging. Since it's been in this setup, it's the first time I'm actually seeing root growth. I can only hope. And then there's my little green hopper or whatever they wanted to sell me here. It's not even the blooms that were in the pictures. I do the same. You can see how the roots just stop growing. I've just got stubs there. I'm waiting for some root extension and I would love to see some roots coming out of the edge of the pot because it is only in lava rock with the orchid top. There should be plenty of humidity around here as well. I'm getting one teeny tiny little root tip looking to progress down here but it's a fight. I tried three Rinko Stylus Giganteas. I'm not trying anymore. So the way the roots behave on these guys, well, clearly that one is a cross. I'm 100% sure that this one also has Rinko Stylus in it. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. Me geeking out over roots and what I see on the daily, seeing the progress or lack thereof. There are some good signals and then there are some meh, not so sure signals. <laughs> Thank you so very, very much for watching. I wish you a beautiful day. On one condition though, that you please stay safe. Take care. Bye.